Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today's video is called, How do you know you're an INFJ or an INTJ? Now, the answer to that question is simple, but also a bit hard to swallow. Because the main thing, the main thing about being an INFJ or an INTJ is being lazy. INFJs and INTJs are probably the two most lazy personality types of the 16 personalities. And I'm gonna get into why that is by talking about what it means to have inferior extroverted sensing. So INFJs and INTJs are the two types that have extroverted sensing, not only as their inferior function, but also as their stress function. That means whenever these types engage with the real world, they are quickly drained of energy and attention and motivation. So the more they are forced to go into the real world to do something, the more energy they need to build up and the more they need to prepare for the situation. They need time to recharge, to gain perspective, to formulate an idea and to get an idea of what they are doing. So yeah, it's not very nice to be an INFJ or an INTJ because INFJs and INTJs are constantly battling a lack of energy to do things and to get things done. So if ESTPs and ESFPs are the most active and busy of all personnel types, almost constantly doing something, being somewhere, talking to somebody, INFJs and INTJs are the most lethargic and slow moving of all personnel types. So how do we know that they are lazy? Laziness to me is when you lack motivation or energy towards an activity. So it can be manifested as postponing things or delaying things or doing things more slowly. It can also be in doing things without effort or consciousness. So doing things on autopilot just to get it out of the way while thinking of other things or being somewhere else in your head. So laziness can feel like an autopilot-like state of non-responsiveness. So it can be in a conversation, not really listening to what the other person is saying. It can be not uh, doing things that you are supposed to do or delaying things or thinking, oh, tomorrow, tomorrow, another day. Now, I'm not saying not all personality types can be prone to certain bad habits and not all and every personality type has its issues. What I'm saying is when you're an INFJ or an INTJ, your main struggle is transforming your vision or an idea into a reality. So actively putting energy and effort into making what you imagine or what you see for yourself in reality. So putting something into action, putting thoughts into action. So shaping the world according to your vision or your ideas. INFJs and INTJs struggle with these things. They find themselves waiting, planning, and getting stuck on this simulation stage. Testing a theory, reworking a theory, thinking about a theory, speculating, and then letting it all fade into nothing. So let's work through and understand the equation of laziness by looking at which personnel types are the most and least lazy. So in the most lazy column, we obviously have the INFJ and the INTJ. And in the least lazy column, we have the ESTP and the ESFP. But we can also talk about two other types here, the, namely the ESFJ and the ESTJ. These types also tend to have characteristically high extroverted sensing in the sense that they have a lot of energy and a lot of tension into what they do and that they are often very busy and active. INFJs and INTJs have two sibling types, the INTP and the INFP. And if you're an INTP or an INFP, I think you might find yourself waving in this video saying, hey, okay, Eric, do you hear me? I'm also lazy. You're, you're not the only one. We are also lazy too. We also struggle with lack of motivation. However, the thing that makes INTJs and INFJs come out ahead in this race, if it's a race, uh, the race of the most lazy, uh, the race of the turtles, uh, then INFJs and INTJs come out ahead because extroverted sensing is their inferior function. That means it's the lowest in their conscious slot. That means also on a practical level that this is the main insecurity in their life. Now, if you run the numbers, which I did in my personnel test, 
what you see is INFJs have about 35% extroverted sensing, according to the test takers, and INTJs about 30% extroverted sensing, so even less. If you look at an INTP or an INFP, what you see is about 40% uh, extroverted sensing. So INFJs and INTJs, they win by a low margin. The problem for an INTP or an INFP is also getting yourself to feel motivated by a task. You are just like the INFJ, stressed and drained by doing things. But INFPs and INTPs have one benefit, and that is it's not the worst thing in the world for them. <laughs> when you look at an INTP, extroverted feeling is the worst thing in the world. When you look at an INFP, extroverted thinking is the worst thing in the world. But when you look at extroverted sensing, it's kind of like sucks, but fine. So for an INTP or an INFP, it's like, yeah, things need to be done. And I eventually I have to take care of my shores and I can procrastinate for a bit, but eventually I have to get busy and start getting things done. And I know this because I'm an INTP or an INFP. When an INFJ or an INTJ like myself um, deals with these things, it is as it's the worst thing in the world. It's the least prioritized thing we would ever do. It's the thing we would do the least on our to-do list. It's what we always put in the very bottom. And it's also the thing we feel the most insecure about. So the inferior function also manifests as the main insecurity, which is like, uh, yeah, we feel insecure about our ability to deal with the real world. So we tend to avoid it. <laughs> and the insecurity, and that might not be a healthy way to deal with an insecurity. I mean, uh, the healthy way would be to learn it, master it, practice it, develop it, and take control of it. So, what I want to say in this video is some practical advice for what you can do to manage this function better. So tips for developing extroverted sensing. First, be realistic about how much energy you can put into a project. Recognize that you have less energy available to deal with the real world than most people. So you need to practice prioritizing and using this energy better. This is the key reason why INTJs have less extroverted sensing than INFJs, because INFJs tend to spread themselves too thin because they overcommit and try to keep please everybody, while INTJs find it much easier to list and think about it logically, what do I need to do and when do I need to do it? INFJs and INTJs should also focus their attention into the most important things. So recognize what is the most important thing for me to put energy into, and then try to put your energy into that. And recognize that when you're putting energy into things you hate or dislike, uh, that's going to suck. <laughs> recognize that when you put in things you love, that's going to be for your benefit, and that's gonna be the motivation. If you know something is for your benefit or for the right cause or for the right reason, you're gonna be able to persist in it much longer. It's also going to feel a lot more rewarding. And here's for INFJs, and that is uh, don't feel too guilty about not being able to be everywhere at once. INFJs and INTJs tend to have a bit of a God complex to them in the sense that they tend to think that they can do everything and that they are responsible for everything that happens in the world because you can foresee the future and because you can see for yourself and speculate and come to insights about how things happen. You also feel intimately connected to everything that's happening around you. The entire universe is your playground. And so you are responsible for everything that happens in the universe, every single thread, every single idea, every single uh, development that's happening around you could have been fixed if you just thought about it a bit longer or a bit better or speculated a bit more in depth or took more time to see or think about something or rehearse or practice for something. But hey, don't feel too guilty about not being able to be everywhere at once and recognize that even your intuition has limits. Your, even your ideas have its limits and your theories cannot fix or answer every question in the world or solve every problem. So uh, accept your limitations with this function. Uh, give yourself time to recharge in between activities. This might seem common sense, but it needs to be said. And more importantly, make the time you spend recharging self-care time. So actually, don't spend time relaxing and feeling like shit, <laughs> doing things you hate or feeling like terrible. Uh, spend time recharging by doing fun things that you enjoy. And ideally, I would say that's write, conceptualize, speculate, envision, 
put on a nice soundtrack, uh, just fantasize or big, get an idea or uh, daydream or big, build something in your head or write something down or create something that is purely creative in its nature. Uh, but if you don't have the energy to do even that, then that can happen if you are really exhausted or really drained. Uh, spend that time doing research instead. So if you feel stuck uh, or you can't get an idea or you can't foster energy to do something, well then put on an interesting documentary or get some extrovert intuition in there because extrovert intuition can really free up any blocks that you feel or struggle with in your life. So if you feel too focused or too obsessive and too stuck, extrovert intuition, research, research, research. Uh, Finally, I would talk about uh, giving yourself mini breaks or small timeouts during activities. So if you're going to a conference or a party, oh, take a break every once every hour or every two hours. Take a small break to go for a walk or be by yourself, tune out, because that's going to help conserve your energy and keep you from becoming overwhelmed. And once again, don't spread yourself too thin and let go of the things that you have no energy or attention for. So if there are things in your life that you know are important and that you know somebody has to deal with, but you don't have the time for, let go and let trust that somebody else will pick it up because there are lots of different INFJs and INTJs out there. So somebody has you covered somewhere, somebody is keeping an eye out or somebody is thinking, uh, somebody is doing something somewhere. So uh, trust that other people are gonna be able to fix other things and the things that you don't have the time or energy for. And of course, push yourself to give all the energy and attention you have to things that you really care about. So if you have a relationship that is really important to you, if you have a project that matters a lot to you, if you are moving somewhere, I just moved. Uh, if you are uh, yeah, experiencing something difficult but very important, you can push yourself a lot further than what you think. You can conquer your laziness and you can push and give the energy that things deserve to make things worthwhile for yourself. And you can go a lot farther than what you think. So even if you feel overwhelmed, or even if you feel drained, or even if you feel exhausted, the body is stronger than what you think. Your body is a lot stronger and tougher than what you can imagine. So it is possible for a limited time to keep going, to push through and to finish something or to get things done, and even if it feels insurmountable at first. So yeah, these are my advice for INFJs and INTJs, but also for, of course, in part, INTPs and INFPs. And if you like this video or agree with the message, let me know in the comments down below and let me know what you do to overcome laziness in your life and what you, your experiences are with laziness or lack of energy or enthusiasm for life and for getting things done. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video.